temptation is real. Thankfully, Christ Jesus shows us that the Word of God is there for us in every temptation. Our study of Matthew 4 from this sermon shows us that the Word of God is pretty good. It's pretty helpful, especially when we're tempted. This is a deep dive into temptation. We look at how temptation can be external or even internal. We look at how uh, God continues to bless us and not tempt us beyond what we are able, or not allow us to be tempted beyond what we are able to endure. But rather, with all temptation, there is an escape. And so in this sermon, we teach how to escape, how to recognize temptation, and how to escape through the Word of God. I make references to addiction. I've used this similar therapy for people to help them overcome their addictions. Now, to be clear, there's a lot that goes into all of this, to addictions, to overcoming temptation. You are not likely to listen to one sermon and then suddenly just be good for the whole rest of your life. It takes work, but you know what? God's there for you. It is Him that you're relying on, not your strength, His. Such is the power of the Word of God. God bless you, my friend. Until next time. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. Curb those who by deceit or sword would ask the kingdom for your son. Grace, mercy, and peace be on us all. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is a narrow sermon. It is narrow in scope. We are basically looking at one thing, and we are looking at it very deeply. We're going to be looking at temptation. We're going to be looking at how God saves us and protects us from temptation. And we are going to look at how God delivers us when we face temptation. The goal is well, very simple. I want you, my hearers, whether here in the congregation or joining online or watching much later, I want you to turn to the Word of God when you face temptation. Because that's what Jesus did. In our gospel reading, we see Jesus tempted three times. The language in Luke suggests that Jesus was tempted many more times than this during this 40-day period. These are just three that are selected for our, our uh, illumination and our growth. All three of these have something in common. The devil tempts Jesus, and what is Jesus' response? Every time he quotes the Word of God. As I said to our Trail Life and American Heritage girls on Monday, if there was anyone who did not need to quote the Word of God, it was Jesus, the very living Word of God. And yet he does. And in doing so, he's teaching us he is showing us the way. We are to learn what to do in temptation here from Jesus' actions. Every time we do a confirmation, me, me and the elder, I and the elders sit down with the confirmants. And we all have questions that we ask them. The questions are in three categories. It's either dealing with the small catechism, dealing with the Word of God directly, or some spirit-led questions, the wild cards, if you will. Bo always asks the same question for one of these questions. The question he asks, is it a sin to be tempted? Is it a sin to be tempted? Here in the Word of God, we have Jesus being tempted. What does that teach us? 
Evidently, it is not a sin to be tempted, at least externally. I would say there's probably a difference if you're sitting and gnawing on your temptation and you're holding it close and you're just like carrying that thing around like you love it. That's probably different. But for the devil to tempt you does not necessarily mean that you've already messed up. See, that's the difference between an external and an internal temptation, too. Temptation, roughly, I teach, comes from three sources. There's that external temptation from the devil and his demons seeking to steal away the comfort that God has given you, to distance you from his word and from God. After all, you saw in our Old Testament reading, what did the serpent say to Eve? First thing, the first temptation we hear about in Scripture. Did God really say? That is still a temptation he uses so often. Does God really care if you do this? Does God really think that's bad? Does God really think you should do this? That's the same external temptation then as it is now. There is another source of external temptation. An external temptation, meaning outside of you, can come from other people. Other people who live in a sinful and fallen world who have the stain of sin within them. Normal people. They will come up and encourage you, either unwillingly or willingly, away from what God wants you to do. Jesus was clearly tempted by the devil. Jesus was clearly tempted by others. Actually, one time, St. Peter tries to correct Jesus. Jesus is speaking about his death. Peter says, no way, we will never let that happen to you. Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. You have in mind the things of man, not the things of God. Temptations come from the devil and his demons whispering in our ears. They come from other people encouraging us away from God's will. And Jesus says in Mark 7, we are also tempted internally through our own sinful heart. This is a result of being a sinful fallen creature. Jesus says, from your own sinful heart comes selfish desires Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. So these are clearly the result of sinfulness. We are sin uh, tempted externally. We are tempted internally. To be clear, Jesus not tempted internally. He lacks that inner sinfulness. He was not born in sin. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. It's an important part of Christmas. But what about us? Don't y'all get tempted? I get tempted. My track record's not even that great. And based off of the number of people who are honest with me in my ministry. I don't think any of us here are betting a thousand. But that does not mean all hope is lost. Jesus resisted temptation through relying on the Word of God. The Word of God is also our defense in the face of temptation. Again, God's Word reminds us, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, He will also provide the, the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. So the fact that you are temp tempted does not mean that you have to sin. Now, the devil tries to convince you that that's the truth, saying, oh, you, you really need to do this. You're too weak. Give up. Just do it. The pressure will ease off. And I'll have you. But 
the Word of God says, there is escape with every temptation. St. James continues in James 1. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own wills, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Temptation has so many shades of gray. Well, is this bad? I don't know. It seems a little bad, but maybe not so bad. Let me just go through the part that doesn't seem so bad, right up next to the part that seems bad, and maybe I'll dip my toe in a little bit, but not too far. The word of truth has no variation for that. If it's bad, it's bad. If it is harmful for us, it is harmful for us. No matter what amount we attempt to engage in. Jesus himself says to the disciples, Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation, for the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Have you found that to be true? How about pastors supposed to ask that? Y'all think Jesus is right? I mean, yeah, I know the answer is yes, but really reflect on it. Have you actually had a time in your life when you are fighting, actively fighting, temptation? Again, this is a narrow sermon. I deal a lot with folks who are struggling to overcome a particular sin in their life. They will come to me when they have no other help left as a final reach out. And I'm glad they do. Sometimes it's addiction. Sometimes it's just something that is ruining their life. By the way, you can always come to me with that. So far I've betrayed zero of the people who have ever come to me. And I would die before I would. <coughs> Temptation is weird. Sometimes it comes fast, in a moment, for our medical workers, acutely. You're not looking for it. It's not looking for you, as far as you know. And then suddenly you get the opportunity to do something selfish. Or to do something that's harder, but selfless. The immediate temptation when you know the right thing, but it's work. Or you'd have to go out of your way. Or it might come back and hurt you. That's acute temptation. For some people it comes in waves. Something the devil is really just pushing down onto your heart and your soul. Often addictions work like this. My dad used to say that he hated his days off because he knew that as soon as he woke up, as soon as everyone was out of the house, that pressure would just slowly start to come right back in. His struggle was with alcoholism. It's that, that pressure saying nobody else would know. It's not hurting anybody. Why not? It makes you feel good. Then there is the most insidious, subtle type of temptation that you cannot notice while it's happening. As it slowly shapes your values, you only recognize it when you reflect on your life after the fact. It is just presenting things to you as though it is normal. It is trimming your thought process to make room for a bad idea. To get you to accept even rough and terrible things. And when you look back at yourself, you realize, oh no, I've become full of pride. You never notice that when it's happening. 
You just think somebody else is being foolish. You are just convinced that your way is the right way. You don't realize you've stopped your ears until you get out of the situation and look back and say, no, my heart was hard. Or you say, no, I insisted on my own way there and I didn't even notice it. What are we to do with this temptation? Use the word of God as your sure defense. The Lord is your mighty fortress. The spirit is indeed willing and the flesh is weak. Therefore, discipline yourselves in using the word of God as your shield, as your portion. For it keeps you close to God. It would be enough for me to just say that and then end the sermon because it's right. But I want to be more helpful than that. St. Paul says he disciplines himself. Have any of you all ever done a fitness routine? Ever? That's not true. You lift weights with me, Michael. Yes, you do. Uh, Michael lifts weights with me. Mine are just a little bit heavier than his four-year-old, five-year-old body, but... Uh, but he'll get there. When you discipline yourself, it's like a muscle, right? You don't, you don't just wake up suddenly good at this. If you're facing a temptation that is dragging you down, it is very rare that you just wake up one day and cold turkey are done forever and have the Word of God at your hand so ready to fight off every temptation. That's rare. you got to build a habit. you got to build and work out that muscle. So here's how you do it. This is what I teach people when they want to overcome something in their life. You have to both use the Word of God to distance you from whatever you're doing, whatever is getting you, and you have to use the Word of God to move you towards something better. Both sides. Feel free to write some of this down. You got pens in the pew? Step one, you actually have to have, step zero really, you have to have the Word of God in you. Did Jesus bring a Bible there out to the wilderness? No. How do we know that? There wasn't a Bible. And he sure wasn't lugging around scrolls out there. No, he had the Word of God in his heart. He had the Word of God in his mind. Guess where you need the Word of God? In your heart and in your mind. That's why we do the devotionals. That's why I continue to work my entire life's work of giving you the Word of God when you need it. That's why we as Christians encourage each other with the Word of God. Whether you know the exact verse or not, what starts to happen is you begin to absorb what God wants for your life. Good. That's a necessary first step. Next, you have to learn to identify temptation. I actually showed you how to do that when I talked about the different styles of temptation. Now that you have heard the Word of God telling you that temptation comes from outside, from those whispers late at night, from the devil trying to discourage you and move you away from his Word, from other people in your life willingly or unwillingly advocating for non-godly things, now you know to look at what is being said to you and compare it with the Word of God to see if it's true or not. That is the test. Is the advice I'm seeking godly advice or not? And if not, then it is not going to lead you where you want to go. I've told you to reflect. That's what we're doing in the season of Lent. We are examining our lives to see what sins might have gone under the radar that we can urge from our life through the Word of God and His Spirit. So you've got to have the Word of God in your heart and mind. You have to learn how to identify the temptation. And now, this is where the rubber hits the road. You have to learn to break the cycle of temptation through God's Word. I like to teach people who are caught up in a sin 
the many steps between being tempted and actually sinning. There are so many. There are so many. I'll use, I'll use an alcohol addiction because I think it's most illustrative, but there are, it, this fits for all of them. I'll use a second one afterwards. For a substance issue of any sort, when you hit the craving and have the craving and that, that pressure is on you, that doesn't mean you have to go out and get it. I encourage people to do something weird. Hide your keys. If you know you're going to be struggling, put your keys in somewhere weird so that you got to go somewhere weird. That becomes a break point. Just because you're walking over towards where the keys are does not mean you have to pick them up. That is an opportunity for you to remember, I am a child of God. The children of God do not do this. I don't need that. Man does not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. Just because you pick the keys up doesn't mean you have to go to the car. That becomes a new break point to remember. When the word of God says, humble yourself before the Lord, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And it's just infinite steps. Just because you're outside doesn't mean you've got to put the keys in the car. Just because you're in the car doesn't mean you have to start it. Just because you're in the car driving doesn't mean you've got to stop there. Just because you've stopped there doesn't mean you've got to go in. Just because you go in doesn't mean you've got to buy stuff. Just because you're at the shelf doesn't mean you've got to touch it. Just because you've touched it doesn't mean you've got to pick it up. Just because you pick it up doesn't mean you've got to keep it. Do you see how many breakpoints are here? The devil says you've started. Let it ride. tell you today, God breaks the chain of temptation at any point in there. Call upon him for deliverance. The second example. We just watched the movie Fireproof again at the campus ministry. We were again talking about godly relationships. If you haven't seen that movie in a while, get with me. We'll watch it again. It's great. One of the things this husband has to do, step one, day one. Do not say anything mean to your wife. Nothing negative. If you're about to say something negative, don't say anything. He's in his kitchen. He says something to his wife. She says something smart. He takes the breath in to say something negative. The temptation hits. Just because the temptation hits, just because he inhaled to say something mean does not mean you have to. And he remembers, I'm not doing that anymore. That's not me. He breathes out, packs his bag, and he leaves. Just because you are tempted does not mean you must fail. You have to identify the temptation. You must call upon God. You must have his word at hand and ready. It works. I've helped many of my students through the years through various forms of breaking the sixth commandment, usually through the internet. I know you know what I'm saying. There is victory with that. Just because somebody is charged with hormones does not mean that they must fail. God grants deliverance through his word. God's word tells us our bodies are made for more. That our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So you ask yourself, ought I involve the Holy Spirit in this? If that answer is no. That's another great point. The word of God has spared you from and delivered you from temptation. By the way, with temptation, there's one final move of temptation. One last ditch effort to get that knife right back into your back. The final temptation, when you mess up, when you stumble and fall, is when the devil whispers to you that you are a failure, that you will never win, that you are a lost cause, that you should give up because you are weak. Oh, how the devil whispers that to people on the road to recovery. That voice is so loud in our ears. Again, the Word of God saves you. Because the Word of God 
says that Christ Jesus bled and died for you. That he shed his blood that you would be righteous. This is not law saying that you must be righteous or you're spitting in his face. That is not what this is saying. It is gospel. He has proclaimed you righteous. And so you are made righteous. When God said, let there be light, there was light. When God says you are forgiven, you are forgiven. And so you are a forgiven child of God, a holy one belonging to him, a saint. Though you still face temptation, even unsuccessfully at times, you still belong to him. You are still in a state of grace. You are resisting temptation from a place of victory. You have already won in Christ Jesus. The devil is trying to drag you down and out. You have already won. You already have eternal life. Temptation tries to convince you that because of what you struggle with, you don't belong in the house of God. But that's not true. Temptation says you're the only Christian that deals with this, but that is not true. Temptation says you are dealing with this. Are you a Christian? And that is a deception. You are a beloved child of God. Your sin, whatever it is, did not surprise Jesus. He went to the cross for you. He died and rose for you, not for the things that you do right, but all the things that you and I have done wrong. All of the times we've given in. And he poured out his Holy Spirit onto you all, his church. To give you freedom. To be clear, I am not advocating look within your side, inside yourself and find your strength. That's kind of new agey. I'm not into that. I am telling you, look to the Lord and see his strength. Call upon him in times of trouble. He has promised an escape with every temptation. He is that escape. Sometimes his people are that escape. If you are struggling with something, reach out to a trusted Christian in your life. By the word of God, we can work on this together. If you have given up fighting whatever temptation is in your life, I beg you, let's fight again. Let's fight once more. God himself fights by your side. And he holds the field victorious. During this season of Lent, that's what we do. We fight against sin. We are not comfortable with it. We're not comfortable with it for the rest of the year, but especially not now. We wear the purple in repentance. We adorn the ashes on our forehead. Remembering that we're going to die, and I don't want to die trapped in the same sin that's bothered me for years. I will embrace his spirit. I will call upon him. The word that's been planted in my heart and in yours. It will be our shield. Again, my goal is that when you are tempted, the word of God is your sure defense. Be not dismayed. Be emboldened. Be courageous. Rely on the word of God. Whether you need to beef up more and put more of it in your heart and mind, do it. Whether you need to get better at identifying what's going wrong in your life, where the temptations are coming from, do it. Whether you need the extra reminder to pray during the path of temptation, so be it. Whether you need a friend to walk with you down that path, so be it. Whether you need the reminder, if you've fallen so many times you can't get up anymore, know that that means you are poor in spirit. And Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He says, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Because when you cannot rely on yourself anymore, that means you can only rely on the word of God and his strength 
and He sees you satisfied. So I don't know where you are on this path, but the Word of God will help you wherever you are. It's really God helping you through the Word. It is God delivering you through the Word. It is God building you up in prayer. It is God building you up in faith, and He will never let you down. God bless you in the face of temptation. May he see you delivered. In Jesus' name, amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep our minds and hearts in Christ Jesus, especially as we walk this pilgrim way through the wilderness of life full of temptation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.